wash your word, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, that may your word, Lord, be most great for us. The word that you want us to be in the name of the Lord. And help us also, Lord, that may our spirit be being in tune with the spirit made. Lord, we ask you, have liberty to speak to us. Thank you. We ask all these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen to me, study. Amen. Hallelujah. Marajan sa hapon sa ato horon in Bisaya. Sa Tagalog, magandang tatahan po sa ating lahat. So, walang pamasa natin ang ating So if you came here this afternoon already, then praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Him because you are in the best, in the best place to worship. And if you came here with heavy hearts, praise God because you are still in the best place to worship. So. Let's praise and worship our God. Sabi nga po sa kanta, pag tumatakbo daw po tayo sa Panginoon, kailangan huwag kapalit yung ito. Kailangan buwan mo lang papunta sa Kanya. Para hindi tayo, ang hindi pa iba yung landas natin. Amen po ba? Amen! Hallelujah! So let's praise and worship our God with excitement.
verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from hell and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is to you like eagles. Hallelujah. Let's feel the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ.
nagbabanggit na ha tungkol sa iyong lahat. Salamat sa ating present motion team. Thank you for the liberal party. Just let us know to sing. It's always our desire to worship the Lord, to be able to commune with you as a personal, as, as our personal God and Savior. And we humble ourselves to you right now, thanking you for, again, the opportunity for us to just honor you, to worship you and experience you in a very special way as a family with one spirit lifting you up. You are God, our holy God, and you desire holiness because we are called special people, separate for you, Mama. for your glory. And so we ask right now, God, as we listen to your word, that you will speak to us as our loving God. Again, we ask your Holy Spirit to use the words that we are about to meditate and hear so that may we, may we hear your voice clearly and powerful. Again, we thank you for this time and we love you, God. These are prayer in Jesus' name. You know God's people say, Amen. Amen. Pray to God. Pakibati po muna yung mga kapatid nyo so that they can be at ease. Magdan ng hapon, kapatid. So, for the last weeks and months, we've been doing a series about discipleship. And last week, we talked about intentional discipleship. Why we would like to be intentional in our discipleship, just as we have seen it as a mandate from the Lord Jesus Christ. Magamat. We were challenged by the brown house. Okay? And hopefully, it will not be right now again another experience. Dahil medyo, our center is transitioning also in its power supply. Kaya po nagbibigay sila kayo ng naglalagay ng pagkakayos dahil na ay sa sobrang init, hindi ma-accommodate ng power supply. You need. Okay? So, that will not happen. So let me start by sharing to you a, a situation which a medical professor gave a study giving an ethical problem to his students. So nagbigay siya ng isang sinayo sa kanyang mga that he would like for them to consult and answer about a particular situation is an ethical question, all right? So he gave a family history ng isang pamilya, and this is the condition, all right? The father has a syphilis, you know that, that's a, okay, STD. Then the mother has a tuberculosis. Yung palang unang anak, the first child, happens to be blind, the second child died. And the third child was actually deaf. And the last, the fourth child, has a tuberculosis. The mother is now on the way, it's her first month of the fifth baby. And the professor asked the students, will you recommend an abortion? Because if you decide and suggest it, the parents will do it. What do you think? She asked, he asked the medical students, particularly the nurses. After a short time of consultation, they were very unanimous. 
and they recommended the parents to do an abortion. And in doing that, the professor said, you just killed Ludwig van Beethoven. Because he was the child, the fifth, the fifth child of those of that couple who happens to be suffering from some sicknesses. And if that was really observed and followed by the parents, there's no Ludwig van Beethoven who happens to be a German pianist. Okay? At kinikilala sa mundo as the greatest pianist and composer of all time. Ludwig van Beethoven. It's good that God does not commit a mistake even in choosing us as His children. Hindi nagkakamali ang Panginoon sa pagpili ng kanyang mga magiging anak. Kaya pwede po bang pakingin kayo ng patabing pakusabi sa kanya, hindi nagkamali ang po sa'yo. Hindi nagkamali ang po sa'yo. At pinili kanya. Because let me share to you this afternoon that God selected it on how God selected His disciples. How the Lord Jesus Christ had chosen His disciples. And our theme for this afternoon is about the making of a disciple. How did Jesus select His first disciples? And our passage is found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. I will be requesting that everyone to please rise in honor of God's, of the reading of God's word. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. Since this again, just five verses or four. No, five will be reading all together. Okay? So, sabay sabay po tayo. Let's read it with the beginning. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going up from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets, and Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Praise be to the reading of the Lord. Let's pray for the Some people wonder what made Jesus chose his disciples. Because the Bible tells us that they were just simply ordinary men, mostly fishermen, poor and uneducated. Okay? As for, we'll confirm this when it was said, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So even the people around them were actually recognizing that the disciples were unschooled. They had no formal training, just ordinary men. And again, Mostly fishermen. There's nothing special about them that would make them the front cover of today's Christian magazines or maybe a guest to a, a, a TV show or a talk show. But Jesus wasn't looking for models or talents. Hindi siya nagpa-expacto para makita kung sino yung magaling. He was looking for real people. He chose people who could be changed by His love and also be sent out to share the same love, even to those whose lives are a mess and marked by pains and failures. Kaya nga, totoo yung sinasabi ni Pablo when he said, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Because the disciples were just simple, ordinary men, and yet God chose them to do his mission in his work. So what made Jesus and how did Jesus select his first disciples? First, let's study this thing and this is a good lesson that we can learn from the Lord Jesus Christ in the area of discipleship. Jesus makes his disciples by giving first and foremost a personal call. Okay? Personal niyang tinawag yung kanyang mga alaga. Okay? The important where it's a personal thing, you will realize that when God has about to do something, He initiates the task. 
Siya ang nagpapasimula. Siya ang nag-uumpisa. He was the one who's responsible for inviting Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Yung mga unang alagad na nabasa natin kanina sa passage. And he asked them to come. He invited them to come. Now, definitely he entered into their world of fishing. Ang sabi niya, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Siya ang nagpunta sa kanila at siya ang nagbigay ng imbitasyon personally. Okay? And this we are going to appreciate with God and with the Lord Jesus Christ. You will understand that God is really very personal because of the way He dealt with the people whom He is calling. Okay? Yung kanyang pinatawa. Kasi kung titignan ninyo, God can even use, Come, follow me, and I will make you a shepherd. Mas madali mo nawain niya. But why would God ask them to come follow Him and He will make them as fishers of men? Simply because they are actually fisher men. Kung ano yung mas madaling lingwahe na maunawaan nila, it is the, the, the language and the ways that God used so that He can connect with them and relate to them the message that He wanted them to understand. Kaya dito maunawaan natin mga kapatid, God is really a personal God. Since God is a revealing God, He would like to reveal Himself to us in a very personal way. Kaya hindi mo mahirap malaman at makilala ang Diyos at maunawa na kanyang kalawban because it is His desire. It is really the deepest desire of God to reveal Himself to you and that we may know Him. Kaya nga kung papasin ninyo, God has different names in the Bible and especially in the Old Testament. Diba? So many of you are studying and attending our G-Groups at Bible Study, you will understand maraming pangalan ng Diyos. Some of them is Jehovah Jireh, which means God is my provider. Jehovah Rope, which means God is my healer. El Shaddai, God is Almighty. Maraming pangalan ng Diyos, kung titignan niyo po. Pero yung mga pangalan na yun, those names were actually a revelation of who He is to those people who have encountered Him. Ito ay mga paraan ng pagpapakilala ng Diyos doon sa mga tao na kung saan naranasan siya. Those days were actually a personal encounter, a result of the personal encounter of those people with God. Ibig sabihin, when God revealed Himself to Abraham, I am El Shaddai, the God Almighty. One time in our lesson in Jiro, I asked our, our, our uh, Jinnup, why do you think would God reveal Himself to Abraham as a God Almighty? Because God is a plan that He's going to use Abraham to be ano mo sabi ng Panginoon kay Abraham? He will be the father of many nations. Magiging ako siya na maraming bansa, na maraming muta. Okay? Will that be possible well, in that time, Abraham was about to be a hundred years old. Isang daang taon na siya, mga kapatid. And yet, ang sabi ng kanyang Panginoon, ng kanyang Diyos, gagawin kita ama ng maraming bansa. Magkakaroon ka ng maraming anak. For a human mind, that is really impossible. Lagi ko sinasabi, ibigay mo na lahat ng Red Bull at Lipovitan kay Abraham para lumakasan niyang katawan, para magkanak. That would really be impossible. That's why God has to reveal Himself to Abraham that I am the God Almighty. For me, nothing is impossible. That's why when God showed to Abraham that He is indeed the God Almighty, gave him a son, and it was proven that indeed that God is a personal God who is Almighty as far as Abraham is concerned. Nothing is impossible with Him. So, again, every name of God in the Bible is actually an experience of those people who encountered God. He is a very personal God. This is the desire of our God that we may know Him personally, in a very personal way. Hindi natin siya makikilala sa magitan ng mga kapatid ng isang teorya. That even God has to send His Son, Jesus Christ, that's why when we read in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14, 
and the word became flesh. It was a powerful phrase that says God all the more became personal to men. The word there is equivalent to the word tabernacle. And God tabernacle among men. Nagkatawang tao ang Diyos. That's why when the people were asking in the Pharisees, tell, show us where is God. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo, if you see me, you see the Father. Nung makita niyo ako, nakita niyo na ang Ama. Because Jesus is actually, in the same way, is with the Father. Mga kapatid, God was never contented to be known just as somebody who's out there. He became personal to the extent that He sent His own Son. That's why God even now is dealing with us in a very personal way. Ang Panginoon, pag nakitungo sa atin sa paraan na maunawa natin at madali natin siyang maintindihan, it may be different from each one of us. It's just like to the disciples, he, he said, I will make you fishers of men because that's the best way to, for them to understand His intention for them because since they are fishermen, I don't know about you. If God is dealing with you and revealing to you something, definitely it will be a thing that you will understand easily because He wants to reveal Himself to you personally. Jesus invites us to come. Too often, we want Jesus to come to us. Diba? Because we want Him to be involved with our own plans, we have our own thing. But Jesus would like us to come and again surrender ourselves to Him. Among the hundreds of fishermen at that time, Jesus looked for the brothers James and, and John, Peter and Andrew. So He was intentional in His work. Because God extended to him, to them, a personal call. So, ang Diyos po natin ay isang personal na Diyos, mga kapatid. He's not just a theory. He's not just an idea that we can think of. He's personal. He can be experienced in a very personal way. In everyday walk of each one of us, definitely, you can experience Him. Unfortunately, today, it became big because of the many, many distortion about the concept of experiencing God. Ano po? Sometimes, many people in groups were relating that to an ecstatic experience. Well, somehow, there's truth on that a little bit, 